mechanism of breathing in human beings. Let us understand the process of breathing through a simple experiment. Take a transparent plastic bottle. Remove its bottom. Then take a rubber cork, Y-shaped plastic tube and two deflated balloons. Now to each fork end of the tube, fix the balloons. Cap the bottle with cork. Put the tube attached to the balloons inside the bottle from its open bottom. Make a hole in the cork and pass the open end of the tube outside the bottle through the hole. Now tie a rubber sheet at the bottom of the bottle tightly so that no air can pass through it. Pull down the rubber sheet and watch the balloons get inflated. Now push the rubber sheet inside the bottle and watch the balloons collapse. How do the balloons get inflated and deflated when we pull or push the rubber sheet? When we pull the rubber sheet outwards, the space inside the bottle increases and the air inside the bottle becomes lighter. So the dense air rushes into the balloons from outside. The air enters the tube through the opening outside the bottle. Then the air travels through the tube and enters the two branches of the tubes and into the balloons. When we push the rubber sheet inside, the space in the jar is reduced and the pressure is increased. This pushes the air out of the balloons. The balloons get deflated. Now let us see how this correlates to the breathing system. The bottle is like a human body. There is an empty space or a cavity inside the body filled with air called body cavity. The rubber sheet is the diaphragm which divides the body into two parts. The upper part is the chest cavity. The Y-shaped tube is the trachea and the bronchi. The balloons are like the lungs which are situated in the chest cavity. Now let us see what happens in our body. The opening of tube outside the bottle is the opening in the nose which is the nostrils. When diaphragm goes down, it makes the chest cavity larger. In the same manner, when we pull the rubber sheet, the space inside the bottle gets larger. The oxygen-rich air from outside enters the windpipe through the nostrils. It happens just like what we saw in the experiment. Air enters the bronchi, like the air enters the two branches of the tubes in the experiment. Then finally air goes to the lungs and the lungs get inflated as the balloons in the experiment. Similarly, when we push the rubber sheet or the diaphragm, it moves the air up and the cavity becomes denser. There is more pressure on the balloons or the lungs and air gets out of the body through the same path as before. That means from lungs to the bronchi, windpipe, nasal cavity, nostrils and finally out of the body. Thus, the breathing is controlled by the movement of diaphragm. Diaphragm is a membrane which is present between the chest and abdomen. The movement of diaphragm is controlled by a group of muscles. In humans, Breathing involves two main steps, namely inhalation and exhalation. Taking in air which is rich in oxygen is called inhalation. During inhalation, the diaphragm moves down, in other words, contracts. The rib cage expands. This leads to the expansion inside the lungs. When the diaphragm contracts, the volume of the thoracic cavity increases. As a result, 
the oxygen rich air from outside enters the lungs through the nostrils and then to the alveolar sacs giving out air which is rich in carbon dioxide is called exhalation during exhalation the diaphragm moves up in other words relaxes the rib cage contracts this leads to contraction of the lungs when the diaphragm relaxes the volume of the thoracic cavity decreases as a result the carbon dioxide rich air moves out of the lungs through the same path but in the opposite direction a human adult at rest on an average breathes about 28800 times per day in other words 12 to 20 times per minute